attempt the practice of using the cinnamon leaves in their cooking. So this, again, is an essential ingredient in the Maranao Rendang. So similarly to the Maranao Rendang would be the turmeric or the kunyit or the dulao or the kalawa. Okay? Because Maranaos really have a, a proclivity for using uh, Maranao food. So who among you have gone to Fonga or Biaso or Kafir? Dao Jeruk in Bahasa. So they use this a lot. This figures prominently in their cuisines. But when we talk about Biaso to Star Alice, and then all these things we put into the uh, uh, cardamom. Cardamom we don't use as well. So this is part of the spice mix. All of these things that, uh, are what we put in the rundown. Um, our cassia trees no longer grow as much in the Philippines, but they still do. Now, the dry, among the dry spices, we Filipinos use, we have some uh, galangal, or langkawas, or lengkwas, or tekwas. Um, ginger. Sorry, this is the galangal. This is some ginger. Uh, somehow, the colonizers brought chili to the islands. So not exactly the chilies that we use in Indonesia, but it's similar. I mean, all chilies come from the New World. All chilies. Sliced into large cubes. Okay, so let's start with this. We have to make a few adjustments in our cooking today because uh, rendang really takes panang. Now, nasi panang is a bit of a thing, and it's not all over the place. Okay, this is one of the ingredients that we serve. So, uh, in their pilgrimage to panang. Now, rendang. Um, there, especially before, but there weren't any plates available. People would think it's brought to Hajj pilgrimage. So some of you know that when Muslims, uh, okay, and it, its inhabitants, the Bina Kaaba or the Karabakh people, um, have this as their traditional dish. So colors, all you know, from the start to finish, from the burnt, to the, from the fresh to the burnt, we're the only ones who have that. Now. One uh, major, among the Taosuks, however, what is unique to them is when they burn it. So you see the spectrum from light to dark, okay? From something fresh to something that's totally burnt. That's the whole spectrum. So whenever I say, to make piaparan, okay? Something with papar, okay? But, in Maginanao, parang uh, sarundig. Kalapang unang kare. So, with dried shrimp. Okay? Uh, pamapa. Okay? With beef. And it's likewise used as a uh, cooking ingredient. Same thing for the tinuk of the kagans. Now, palapa na maranao, as I said earlier, is a totally different thing. It's an alio, sakura, that's pounded together with a few other ingredients. It's also an ingredient and the condiment. Now, among the Maranao, sometimes we put galangal, or in Visaya, which is what again? What's galangal in Visaya? Langkawas. Okay, now let's just do a quick look of the palapa. Let's have a palapa. Let's we continue to do so today. In Magindanao, we have what we call the kanduli. Among the, 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 the rest of the Philippines, who so don't use the word pan, they use the word tinapay. So tinapay is yeasted, it's fermented. So that's what it is. Uh, it would be called gulai, okay? And then we'll look into that later on. Okay, so again, let's look for further similarities. Here, not so much in, uh, in Tagayan de Oro, but up north, in Pampanga and Ibasiha, they have what they call buro, right? So buro, fegalog is what? Ginataan, okay? In Cebuano, in, in, in Visaya, when you to have a preparation that's just... Uh, um, uh, gata with something, fish or beef, what do you call it? Tinunu. We mentioned earlier coconut um, as roasted. So 
when it did it in its roasted forest. So we have something that's brown, caramelized some of it, so coconut. Um, in the Philippines, I would think that this is the only country in the world that Luzon, what, what, what they do with chicken, and here as well, people call it pinola, right? So again, these are cognates, these are the same words. It's words with a similar